Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be a bit of a puppy haul for our golden retriever puppy. So if you want to see a little bit more, then keep on watching. So welcome back and also hello if you are new. I've got a feeling if you're watching this, you're probably on the journey to getting a puppy yourself and wanting to know what other people have bought because that's what I've been doing for the past few months. I have loved videos like this and I thought I would make ours. It's not a conclusive list of things, there are still other things that we need to buy, um, but we are actually going to choose our puppy on Saturday and it's Thursday when I'm filming this. So I thought I would spread out the cost. The puppy itself won't be coming home with us for another, I think about three or four weeks afterwards. So I just wanted to stagger purchasing things so we weren't having to buy everything all in one go and obviously um, pay for our puppy as well. So I'm from the UK and I've been to two places to get these things. Um, I've been to Aldi for a few bits because they had their special pet event on and then I also went to Pets at Home for a lot of it because obviously that's kind of the go-to place to go. So what I'm going to start with um, are like food and treats and that kind of thing. Now one thing I didn't know and this was actually um, one of my subscribers I think told me that on here or on my Instagram um, and suggested that I become a member of the Pets at Home VIP Puppy Club and I did it there and then at Pets at Home and basically there is an app and you download it and you put your details on and it gives you like vouchers and discounts and that kind of thing. So I have it up on my phone now. I'll try and do like a little screen grab so you can see. But with the VIP Puppy Club, you get like a birthday treat. Um, so your puppy's first shop, shop, you get money off. You get money off puppy food, money off a groom at the groom room. Um, you can subscribe to stuff and get it your first month free or free puppy food and that kind of thing. And when I went, um, the guy, on this hill was so helpful um absolutely brilliant and he was like right you can use this one this one this one this one so i got money off my shop but i also got some free puppy food and there were two options and he said that this one was the most popular one and um, so i got it just to give it a go and this is wainwright's dog's best friend um puppy food for two to 18 months it's a hypoallergenic recipe there's no wheat no added beef or pork no dairy no eggs no soya or fillers and no unhealthy additives and it's turkey and rice flavour, if you were wondering. Now, obviously, this was freebie, and I will do my research into what is the best food for my puppy once I've spoken to the breeder properly um, and worked out what they're having at the moment. But then also, like, I'm still doing my research. So this is just something to try, but it does seem well recommended, and I do see this brand a lot. Um, if you have any suggestions of how you feed your dog, uh, especially if they are a similar breed, then let me know because um, sharing's caring. It's always nice to learn from each other. Now, the next few bits and bobs are kind of like treats or training treats. Um, obviously, I'll be training my puppy because I want to, you know, teach them how to do the right things and it's fun. It's like learning and play for them as well uh, and something that I can do with my three children and a puppy as well. We can all learn together. Um, so the first thing that I picked up aren't necessarily related to training, but these are dentists tubes uh, these are the puppy specific ones and they're from pedigree i picked up two packs because i think they were like two for one pound fifty or something like that and obviously it gives them something to chew but it's good for their teeth um, and i thought i would just pick these up so they get used to it um, i do need to buy a um, puppy toothbrush and toothpaste but again i just want to do my research into the best one um, when you're doing your puppy's teeth in the early stages it's more to get them used to the sensation of having a human messing around with the mouth and their teeth and just so it becomes a really normal thing for them so obviously that's a habit that i want to break in really early then moving on to treats one bit of advice that I would give you is really read all of the instructions on the back um, so you know that what you're buying is actually suitable for your puppy because I have two sets of treats here but these first ones are pedigree and um, they're the tasty minis and they're chicken flavour and just tiny tiny little treats that are perfect for training. 
However, these ones aren't suitable for puppies until they reach four months, so it's four to 18 months. So I have them and they're great and they'll be fine when our puppy reaches four months. However, when they come home, they're only gonna be two months old, uh, so eight weeks old. And these ones here by WAG are chicken and yogurt meaty bites and they have added calcium and support healthy teeth and bones, but these are suitable from eight weeks old. And it just means that then we can crack on the training straight away. Um, but then I have other ones to try as he or she gets older. Um, so I picked two packs of these up because everybody recommends them um, just to have them in and get started with the training from the get go. So that's those. And then the only other food related item I bought was this stainless steel bowl. Now this is just going to be water um, initially. I wanted to get a couple um, and ideally I wanted to get a larger one, but um, this was the only stainless steel bowl that they actually had in stock at my local pets at home. So I picked this up for now. I got these because they're dishwasher safe, they're easy to clean, they last really well and everybody recommends them. My parents use these for their dogs, so this is going to be the water bowl. However, I do understand that as a breed, golden retrievers can be quite greedy and they do love their food. So I have ordered a slow feeder bowl and I actually went to go and get one at Pets at Home, but the cost of their slow feeder bowl, and it wasn't a particularly well rated one, was £16. And I just thought, right, I'm going to have a look at home. When I get, like, the kids in bed, I'm gonna have a nosy online, and I've actually ordered one that comes really well rated on Amazon. So I'll leave a picture of it here, and it's basically like a maze shape, and I've gone for the aqua blue colour. And it just encourages your dog to take their time with their eating because if dogs eat too quickly, it can give them discomfort in their tummies, it's not very good for them, um, and obviously, like it encourages that greedy attitude. So this is hopefully going to keep puppy eating nice and slowly, uh, it will aid their digestion and hopefully just make that eating process a lot more pleasurable for them. So that is something that I've ordered and I'm waiting to come. I fully expect that as puppy grows we might need to upgrade those things, get bigger things in um, and you know we're learning. I've owned a dog before, I've grown up around dogs but I'm not an expert and I know that I'm going to learn as much as this puppy will. So that is um, all of the feed stuff that we picked up and now on to toys because it's fun isn't it we've only picked up a few things and i know it's probably not enough yet we do definitely need to look into chews but um there's obviously different advice regarding chews and what is good for your dog to be chewing um, and i wanted to do my research on those a little bit um before i committed so the first thing that i picked up was from the puppy section and i have to say the puppy section at Pets at Home was so strange. I'll include a clip because I've had three children and it really reminded me of when you go shopping for your baby while while you're pregnant. And there was like, it was like baby blue and baby pink and everything was divided and there were like teethers, the teething rings with like a teddy on that you would get for your child as well. It would just make me laugh. Um, but we don't know what um, sex we're going to go for. We're very much of the opinion that when we go and choose on Saturday, we kind of want the puppy to choose us and just click with the dog that feels best for our family. Most of the people in this house do have a preference for a boy, but I'm just trying to encourage them to sort of like make sure that we end up with the right dog for us. But I have no idea what we've, we're going to end up with. So we've got some pink things and some blue things. and. As with children, it doesn't really matter if your dog, you know, plays with a pink thing and it's a boy, does it? So um, I picked up this little bunny rabbit and it squeaks. And I was with my two-year-old when we bought these, so he was responsible for a lot of choosing. Uh, this one was Pets at Home again, and I just thought that this would be like quite a nice, soft and easy thing to play with. The arms are quite um, floppy, and the ears and legs are as well, so there's something to like tug on, and there's different textures, and then there's a squeak. The next thing, again, my two-year-old was responsible for this, um, and it is a ferret and it's just from the main range, it's not from the puppy range. Um, it says snuggle and cuddle, ideal for comfort, and it has a squeaker again. But again, it's like a different shape and a bit longer and one that you can kind of cuddle up with. And uh, so pick that one up as well. And then we also got these two. So the Kong is something that I had with my old dog and um, it's well recommended all the time. You can put treats in there just to encourage them to do like, um, puzzle solving and it you know it gives them something to distract themselves with you can put like dog friendly peanut butter in here and all sorts and I just picked up the blue one of these it's the puppy version and again when puppy grows out of this we will upgrade and get a larger one no doubt the next thing that we picked was <laughs> my two-year-old thought that this was brilliant it sounds like a pig and um 
it oinks and it's just one of those makes a different noise i fully expect this one to not last because it's not the most durable but like these toys are fun um aren't they and i think that it will be played with a lot the other bits that we got were actually from aldi during their puppy like dog event um this was a strawberry which my four-year-old little girl really liked <laughs> And that one squeaks. They had loads of different um, like vegetables and fruits. And then we got some, uh, just a cheap bag of tennis balls. Now I know that these are gonna go missing and get chewed to bits. Uh, we got the smaller ones initially because we thought it'd just be easier for a puppy to play with and like carry in their mouths. But obviously once these are all used up, we'll probably upgrade to like a full size tennis ball. So those are all of the toys, but now I'm gonna move on to kind of like the miscellaneous items that we picked up that I still think are really important. The first thing that we picked up was this training clicker and it's just a pets at home one and it's just there to help your puppy associate good behavior with this noise and um, it was cheap and cheerful i think it was about three pounds and um, it's just something that everybody recommends having so i've got one of those and then the next few things are kind of related to uh, grooming poos poo bags that kind of thing so the next thing that i picked up was just this collar it was only a cheap one it's a padded buckle collar um it was five pounds i got the small one initially and this is only just because i know that my dog is going to grow very quickly but i want them to get used to the sensation of having a collar around their neck and um, just to keep them safe really so when they've had their last set of jabs and they can go on walks and stuff they will have a color they'll be used to it they'll be used to that sensation of having something on their body um which keeps them safe and it's also there for the tag as well and i'll get my puppy chipped but i think having a tag is just really convenient as well the next thing i've got is for grooming um i've yet to decide on a shampoo um and even you can get conditioner now as well for your dogs um golden retrievers have a lovely coat but it has two layers and the undercoat needs quite a lot of work because that is what sheds um so i picked up a brush just for sort of everyday use and then i also wanted to pick up something else but it wasn't in stock but i will move on to that in a second so the brush that i picked up was just the firminator and this is just the dual grooming brush you can use it on dogs and cats we have cats as well um so that's handy to know however i don't know how they would feel about sharing a brush with a dog mm. um but it's just for da daily grooming so there's two sizes there's hard bristles and soft bristles um and it's just to give like puppy a brush through and get them used to that sensation of being groomed and that it's normal and that it's a nice happy thing to have happen to you the other thing that i wanted to get was the firminator like a big rake brush that is really good for getting that thick undercoat out when they do start to molt um but they didn't have it in stock so when i came home i went on amazon and to see if it was in stock there or in stock online uh, elsewhere and i actually came across a, another version that amazon stocks that loads of people were raving about in the reviews came really highly reviewed and some people even compared it with the firminator version and said it was better and it was 12 pounds or so i think compared to i think the firminator one is in its 20s nearly 30 pounds i thought i would give it a go and hopefully the reviews are correct and that works really well for us because we know that regular grooming will just be part of what it's like having a golden and then next up is uh poo stuff and related stuff um so the first thing i got was like a poop scooper um or poop shovel they call it we have a garden um which is lovely like for puppy uh, to go and play in and live out their days in and stuff and have fun with the kids uh, but i just thought this might be quite handy it could be a bit gimmicky i might end up not liking it but having had dogs before i i do know that not every poo is an easy one to pick up and dispose of so i thought that would be easy for those instances um, and my two-year-old quite enjoyed chasing me around with this earlier as well so handy for that i guess while it's clean anyway so i got that but then the next thing while we're on the topic of poo collection um with these and i've just got the pets at home biodegradable poop bag dispenser um so there's a pack in there already and you get a spare with it and they're just the black ones but it can clip to like a belt or a bag or you can stick it in your coat pocket and um, quite compact 
and I like the fact that they're biodegradable as well so I picked that up but then in terms of refills um, we saw these and they were quite jazzy I thought they were quite cute so we've got like yellow ones um, aqua blue ones with like stars and rainbows on then just blue and like a coral colour um, but this will do us for now and then if we do find better alternatives or cheaper alternatives we might switch to them but out of convenience I just thought I would stock up so that's what I did um, then one thing that you really really should look into getting if you have a puppy is an enzymatic cleaner and this is just one that I picked up from Pets at Home and it's the simple solution one it smells like spring breeze apparently which is quite nice and it's a stain and odour remover but it contains probacteria producing enzymes and it eliminates urine feces and vomit odours and stains and it also helps prevent repeat marking which is obviously what we all want we're quite lucky that in the back area of our house now um everything is like hard flooring so it'd be a lot easier to clean um and i feel like this is where the puppy will spend most of his or her time um because it's like directly accessible to the garden and that kind of thing so it shouldn't be too difficult to clean but obviously i don't want to encourage them to go in the same spot all the time and uh, we want to encourage it to go outside so i picked that up and that is something that everybody and their dog recommends Another thing we were actually given by my mum because she's recently got a puppy who doesn't need these anymore um, are puppy toilet training pads. However, we're not going to be using these as a way to train our puppy. We're just going to try and keep them going outside as much as possible. Um, these are, however, handy for certain instances, just like lining the bottom of their crate, for example, um, just because it's handy to have that bottom layer there just in case accidents ever were to happen or if maybe they like spill something if they've got like some water in there as they grow up and they've got like a bigger crate that kind of thing so we're gonna we got them we were given them we didn't have to pay for them which is nice um and we got them if we need them so i have two bags of these but i don't intend on purchasing any more because it's just not typically the way that i want to train our dog uh, but we have them and it's nice to have those and then the final things that i've got to show you are to do with like bedding and books and that kind of thing so i actually picked this first thing up from aldi and they had their pet event on like i said and i noticed that they had these and i thought it would be worthwhile picking one up now a lot of the books that i've read or um articles that i've read or just advice from other owners is that when you go and choose your puppy if it's okay with the um, breeder, take a dog blanket that like smells of home. So I've washed this with our normal like fabric detergent and fabric softener so it smells more like us and I've been like just keeping it with me at night you can sleep with it in your bed that's advice that I've been given as well just so it smells very much of your environment so this can be with your puppy you can take it along and leave it there while you're waiting for them to reach the age where it's appropriate for them to come home with you and leave their mum and then when they come home with this it will also smell of a familiar scent from us that they will get used to but then also it will smell of their like litter mates their brothers and sisters and their mum and the environment that they were in before and uh, so the idea is is that then it gives them comfort if they need it because obviously the transition from going from there to here is going to be a huge one in that puppy's life another suggestion is obviously leaving this in their crate with them at night or when they go for a nap you can also use a hot water bottle to mimic the um sensation of being like with their mum where it's nice and toasty and warm so that's something that we'll be doing as well um but this is all ready to go we're going to take this with us on saturday and hopefully it's okay to leave it um and then bring it back and hopefully it will help so the next thing that i've got is really hard to show you so i have to put like a cutaway clip so i can like show you what it looks like in full but it's actually an aldi pet bed we got the large one and um, because obviously it will grow with our puppy um but i asked on my instagram if people recommended them if they had them before or if not like where else to go and loads of people said that they were actually like fab quality and considering that puppies like to chew and destroy things quite a lot anyway that they're, they're cheap enough that it's not too much of a shame if they do you know break it into pieces basically so i picked one up because i think it was around 18 pounds which really isn't too bad for the size and my t-roll picked the print so we had the navy one there was a gray one as well um but it is, it is lovely actually the bottom is like a waterproof fabric uh, you can take the middle out and wash that and wash it all separately and i'm not expecting this to last them for the rest of their lives but um as a starter bed that wasn't too expensive we have that and then the final Oh, I'm just going to chuck it over there. The final thing that I have to show you um, are just two books that we have been reading and finding really useful. 
And so the first one is um, Easy Peasy Puppy Squeezy and this is just something that lots and lots of dog owners have recommended to me. It comes really highly rated on Amazon. So what I love about this book is that it's just really well organised and it's really easy to understand everything's like sectioned off into the perfect sort of sections for you to get your head around. And um, there's like chapter two has an entire list of everything that you'll need. So um, this is kind of what I'm going off. So comfort blanket, a den, so a crate or puppy pen, hot water bottle, bowls, toys, cheese, food, treats, poo bags, enzymatic cleaner, uh, collar, dog tag, harness and lead. And we're going through that list at the moment um, along with a few like extras that we, we want to add to it. But there is um, a chart of things to expose your puppy to so nothing becomes like scary or unusual for them and they're a well-adjusted dog. And I've just been finding this really, really useful. Um, our breeder in particular suggested um, this and um, there's just advice here about what to know um, when it comes to a golden retriever specifically. Um, so again, there's like training advice in here. There's information about their joints because that can be a pro problem for goldens. There's information about their joints because that can be a problem for goldens as well. And then there's also like information about how much food to give them, um, how long you should walk them for, um, house training tips. But it's all very specific to having a golden retriever, which is handy to have. So these have kind of been our bibles while we've been learning and preparing, and I'm sure we will be reaching for them a lot <laughs> in the coming months. So in terms of things that we haven't got yet, we haven't got um, a crate, and um, we will be looking to get one of those it's just again it's quite a big expense so i've got all of this first and we'll probably get that next um we'll probably go for a large one so they can grow into it you can get dividers to kind of make it feel a little bit more snug and secure while puppy's little and uh, we have old blankets and things to go in there as well um and then i think we also need as i mentioned earlier we need to get a toothbrush and toothpaste that are suitable for puppies uh, shampoo conditioning products and then we also need to look into getting a harness but but um, obviously puppies can't go for walks um, until they have had their injections, their last lot. So we're going to look to get like puppy fitted with the right size harness when that time comes. Because one that I buy, buy now might be too big or too small and I want to get it fitted properly. So that will probably be a purchase that comes later on down the line when they're they're ready to go on their first walk and stuff um, and I'm sure like there are other things that we need more of like toys and specifically things that you can chew um, and I'm just doing my research all the time but hopefully you found this video helpful so yeah thank you so much for watching and um, let me know down in the comments below if you are getting a puppy too what you're getting are you getting a golden something else I've been so excited watching these videos from the people so it's quite fun to do my own finally um, and yeah thank you so much for watching I will hopefully see you very very soon and have a lovely rest of your day. Bye!